In today's lecture, we'll be talking about a quite useful tool which will help us to understand how to draw the diagrams of an industrial process. We'll be talking about what's called a P and I diagrams. Uh, the topic that uh, I will be covering is uh, covered uh, in uh, this textbook, for example. Uh, it's uh, a textbook that's written in English. I'll just uh, erase this very quickly. And uh, in this textbook you can find uh, a quite nice description of uh, various sensors and uh, also of uh, the diagrams and how to plot them. Uh, the picture that you see here, that's actually uh, just volume 1, there is also volume 2, uh, and uh, both uh, are quite interesting. Uh, they, are, they are covering typically like chemical or biotechnological processes, so it's not like uh, any let's say mechanical engineering stuff, but uh, uh, the s subject of uh, PI diagrams is uh, quite well covered in, in this book. Uh, so I will show you some examples of uh, what uh, we can do with those diagrams and uh, some of my examples will be selected uh, from this book. Uh, so what does it mean if we are talking about PNI diagrams. Well, it stands for piping and instrumentation diagram. So this diagram is telling us uh, what are the connections, what are the pipes in uh, our process and uh, what is the instrumentation. So it is like a block diagram that is explaining how the process works and uh, also what variables and where do we measure them in the process. It's also sometimes referred as PID. Don't confuse this with a PID controller. This is not a PID controller, this is a PI diagram. So it's a little bit confusing if you're in the field of control because you know probably PID controllers. But here in this lecture I will refer to PI diagrams. In some cases it is also called process and instrumentation diagram. Both names are possible. Uh, you can see that both names they describe uh, the same. They describe us uh, how the process works in terms of um, connections between individual tanks for example. Uh, it shows us uh, for example where we have pumps, where we have valves, but most especially it shows us uh, what is the instrumentation. So what variables do we measure and where? So a PI diagram will show us uh, the placement of sensors and actuators in our process. So if we are talking about, for example, beer production, uh, the process will be composed from several tanks and uh, the PI diagram will show us where do we measure temperature, where do we measure liquid level, where do we measure flow, and so on. It's not only about sensors, but uh, it shows us also the actuators. So an actuator can be, for example, a valve that uh, is uh, operated either by hand or by some electric motor. And uh, in this PI diagram, we'll see where is this control going and uh, we'll see for example the, the names of the signals so that we can then check the documentation of our control system to see where this is actually connected. So a PI diagram displays the connection between the devices in the technology and the control system. So it can show uh, that uh, for example the a specific temperature sensor is installed in a, spe in a position where we need it but then it will tell us for example to what circuit it will go in the control system. The PI diagram usually does not specify the functional principle and uh, construction of the sensor so it will not tell you that this is for example an ultrasonic liquid level meter 
or that this will be a platinum RTD but it will tell you that at this specific place you measure liquid level and that at some other specific place you measure temperature but you can specify the functional principle with a side note but it's not very common in those diagrams so the PA diagram specifies us only a function in the process so it's telling us here at this place we measure temperature but it will not tell us how and with which device the symbols that I will discuss in this lecture will be according to this standard ISO 3511 but uh, there are other standards as well for example ISA 5.1 so I will refer to this first standard the international standard but uh, keep in mind that there are other standards as well uh, the symbols are quite similar so uh, you will be able to recognize uh, the symbols and you will understand what it means but uh, the graphic symbols are a little bit different so uh, I will stick to one standard to, to this one that's the one that's uh, described in the textbook uh, so uh, how is the symbol looking like so we have a symbol and this symbol represents us the sensor or the actuator and uh, the symbol has uh, two parts it will have a graphical symbol that will represent the instrument it will show us the sensor it will show us the actuator and so on and then we will have a letter code that will tell us what is the specific meaning so for example with a circle we will say that this is sensor or an actuator and then with the letter code we'll be able to find out that this specific sensor for example will measure temperature and eventually you will find also some additional numerical symbols such as uh, the circuit number so that uh, you can trace this signal to your documentation or to a table that uh, will tell you where this signal is going uh, in most cases the symbols show the placement of our sensors and actuators with the, without respect of a specific uh, type uh, of uh, sensor and uh, connection and signal types so it will not tell us if uh, this sensor has uh, a voltage signal or a current signal or if it is a digital bus but it will tell us that uh, the signals in our circuit from the sensors have this name we measure this variable and then the actual uh, type of signal that's up to the let's say electrical documentation it will tell you that here you need a two wire signal that uh, at some other place you will need a four wire signal and so on so uh, the symbol that we will see in most cases is the symbol for an instrument uh, so it is a circle which uh, has a diameter of approximately 10 millimeters and this circle is telling me that here I have some instrument and this instrument might be really the sensor itself so we will measure some variable in this case then you have a line like this and uh, the line ends at the measurement point the line can go from the circle in any direction so um, in most cases you will use vertical lines if for example you have a horizontal pipe then you will have a vertical line uh, if you have uh, a tank for example then in most cases it will go uh, with a horizontal line uh, to the sensor but uh, it can be uh, under any angle uh, all the lines here in the circle are thin lines so not like bold lines but thin lines uh, this circle can show us not only the sensor itself but uh, it, it can mean also a display so uh, as we will see later it is possible that uh, the sensor or the instrument in general has uh, some 
output signal that we transfer to the control system but it may have also a local display so that we see directly in the technology what is the value of our variable. There is another symbol that looks like this and uh, in this symbol but you can see this this horizontal line and this horizontal line is telling me that this is a panel meter. So this will be somewhere on a panel either directly at the technology or it may be in some control center and uh, it will usually not have uh, any electrical output signal such as uh, voltage or current but it will show you on the panel directly what is the value of your variable. You can also specify with a circle like this what is uh, the exact uh, measurement point and this is done with a circle with diameter of approximately two millimeters. So if in your diagram you need to specify exactly at which location you need to measure the variable, you'll do a circle like this and then eventually you can uh, put for example some coordinates from somewhere or you can put a side note on the drawing telling what should be the exact location. Uh, there is also an alternative symbol which looks like this, like an ellipse. And uh, this symbol is used uh, for cases where you need a larger numerical description. So for example, if you have uh, like a larger process, then uh, all the numerical description will not fit in your circles. And uh, you can use a symbol like this. Uh, there are specialized software tools that allow you to plot directly those diagrams so uh, you don't need to plot all those symbols yourself but if you are looking for uh, a diagram you, you can find uh, those uh, software tools that, that are available. Uh, let's take a look on the numerical code. So here we have our circle that represents our instrument. Here I have uh, made an example of the panel meter, so this, that's the horizontal line like that. And here we see we have the letter code, and here we have eventually some numerical identification. Uh, here is an example how it may look like. So uh, here is a number that's telling me what is the circuit number. And here is the letter code that's telling me what uh, do I measure and how do I process the output signal? It is usually three letter code, uh, but it really depends on, uh, on what, what do you actually measure. So it may be two letters or it may be four, more letters than three. Uh, anyway, the capital letter, that's the first one, is telling you what is the type of the variable. In a few minutes I'll show you a table that will tell you that here this first T, capital T, stands for temperature. So the first letter is telling me if, whether I measure temperature or uh, humidity or position or um, any other, other kind of, uh, of variable that I have like a non-electrical variable in most cases. Uh, the second letter if it, is, if it is a small letter, it will specify you if this is a summation, subtraction or a ratio. So it may happen that for some process reasons, you are interested not directly in the variable that you measure, but you are interested in a summation of variables uh, or subtraction. So for example, let's say uh, you measure temperature but uh, in your process uh, you are not interested in just the temperature value but you are interested in uh, some temperature difference for example so you, you are for example producing I don't know rolling some some sheet metal and uh, you would measure the temperature at both ends of this sheet metal and uh, uh, you need that this has the same temperature so you are looking for the temperature difference. Of course, you uh, may need to measure the absolute temperature, but here you would be interested in temperature difference. Uh, 
so you make a subtraction and then you uh, output the signal which corresponds to the difference or it may be for example a ratio let's say uh, you are measuring humidity and uh, when we discussed humidity I showed you the dew point hygrometer which was like an optical instrument and uh, in this instrument we measured uh, the difference between the radiation that goes directly from the transmitter to the receiver and uh, the radiation that is going uh, over the mirror that uh, is uh, with you or without you so we were actually looking for a ratio of our signals so this can be specified with uh, this small letter and again in a few minutes you will see a table that uh, is telling you how to specify that uh, this is uh, an optional letter, so uh, you may not, but well, you don't have to use it unless you need those properties. So, for example, here in in my case, uh, I you see I don't have any small letters, so I did not use any subtraction ratio and or summation. The third letter and the following letters, they are telling you how the signal is being processed. So, for example, you see here the letter I and A, and we'll see later the meaning. So, this is telling me whether I show it locally on the display, for example. It uh, is telling me if I control something from this variable, or if I log it in some memory, for example. And then, this, and again, optional position p3 is telling you some additional info so uh, it is telling you if uh, you are looking for high or low limits as it would be the case here so the letter h and l in this position is telling me that here i measure temperature and at the same time i am looking for high limit and low limit at this position you may include also some additional info for example a chemical formula so if this would be a sensor for some chemical properties you may include that this measures for example methane let's say so the symbol looks like this here uh, it is uh, giving me where do i measure this is telling me what and what do i measure and how and eventually specifies if I do something additional with it and this number is, uh, is going to the technical documentation to a table in most cases where I can find some additional info for example I can find what is the principle of the sensor or what type is it or what is the output signal and you may have a signal like this this is uh, telling you the, uh, the signal line uh, where is it going uh, so you can see that it's a thin line eventually with an arrow which is telling us the signal direction and here you have like those crosses under 60 degrees so uh, this is telling me that th this signal is uh, not uh, the flow of material in my process but that this is uh, the signal from my sensor and eventually some control signal. Let's take a look now on uh, the letters that we may find uh, in the diagram. So here we have uh, our symbol and uh, I have used different colors to show you the positions and their meaning in the table. So the first letter is always a capital letter and uh, here you can see the variables now this table continues for about two more slides so for example if uh, I want to measure flow then the first letter would be F if I would like to measure position then the first letter would be G the second optional small letter is telling me what uh, mathematical operation do I do with the signal. So if it is letter D, 
then it is uh, at this position it's telling me that I am working with difference here would be would be small letter D if it's an F it would be a ratio and so on uh, you can know that uh, the same letter in different positions will have different meaning so for example here if I have D like a capital D on the first position it means density but then at the second position a small letter D would mean difference and uh, the third letter here is telling me what is the output function so what do I do with uh, the signal so uh, if for example it's a letter A it means signaling so I'm sending the signal somewhere and I show this value on, uh, on a scale or on some display or in some chart that's uh, what you have seen in uh, in my previous example over here so uh, we, we see that we measure temperature that would be on some other slide in the table but here we already know the letter A which uh, stands for the signaling case if uh, it would be letter C then it uh, would mean control so uh, this is also telling me what do I do with the variable in the control system so I can either display it for example if it's letter I so I just show it somewhere I show it on the display I show it on some trend chart for example but I don't have to use it for the control of my process so I'm just looking for what's the temperature in my process if I want to control this process I will need an actuator and uh, then it would be letter C in my control in my, in my PA diagram so here we can see that uh, we have uh, the I letter indication and signaling which is mostly the same thing so if I go back to my example here we measure temperature we signal it somewhere and we display it somewhere else in, in the chart. Uh, if we look through the different variables we will find out that in most cases uh, the meaning of uh, the variable corresponds to the, of the, the letter code that you have here. So for example if uh, we have P it stands for pressure if we have T it stands for temperature here I forgot uh, one check term so this just should be summation I just uh, replace this this should be sum summation so uh, it's not always you can see that uh, for example if uh, we here time so uh, time you would expect uh, probably T but uh, since T is already taken for temperature uh, then the authors of the standard have chosen the letter K but you can see that the, the other variables they correspond quite well so S for speed uh, humidity M for, for moisture and so on so now we already know what is the meaning of uh, mostly all of our symbols that we can see here uh, Q here stands for the summing process so if you are summing the two signals together then this might be small letter Q and uh, the third letter again it's a, the third letter is a capital letter and uh, you can see okay now Q stands for also summation and integral eventually um, I will draw your attention to, to this uh, you can see that uh, the, the letter R if it's uh, used uh, in the first place its meaning is uh, radioactive radiation but uh, if it's uh, on the third position it is for logging so you're recording the data somewhere and uh, you're storing the data so that you can later access them so 
if uh, for example I would go back to my to my symbol here you see T I A and if I would add the letter R at the end then it means that I'm displaying the data locally on some display I'm indicating that somewhere but uh, I am also recording the data and uh, I'm storing and logging the data somewhere in the memory. It can be also used to describe switching. So for example, if um, well, you don't have to involve any control system in, uh, in your PI diagram, you can uh, connect your sensor, you can uh, make it uh, so that it's uh, looking for example for the maximum signal and uh, then you can switch for example some pump so let's say you want to uh, be sure that uh, the so you have some tank and uh, you want to be sure that it's full and uh, it's not overfilled so you're looking for the maximum liquid level so then you would use a liquid level sensor which would be letter L and uh, then you would signal it would switch some pump when uh, it's off or on, whether it depends on, on your function. So uh, the uh, PI diagram does not need to include uh, a control system. The signals can go directly from your instrument to an actuator. And here is the rest of the table. So uh, you can see we use almost all uh, letters that we have in the alphabet. Uh, for example here you can see viscosity, weight or force. Uh, there are some letters that are either called other variables or as uh, we have seen uh, user selectable. So uh, you may add some additional variables that uh, you require. That may happen because uh, you see that those letters uh, will not cover all the pro possibilities that you have. They cover most industrial variables such as temperature, pressure, humidity, liquid level and so on. But there might be some other variables, I don't know, you, you, let's say in mechanical engineering, that for example surface roughness. You uh, are producing something and you need to make sure that your surface roughness is something. So then you will have a sensor for this or a system and inst instrument that measures this this surface roughness and uh, then you will use some user selectable value and uh, then with a side note uh, in the documentation or in the drawing you will say that this letter L uh, N or, or O or some other letter uh, is describing uh, my, my function. So the standard is made in such a way that uh, you can adapt uh, this uh, to processes that uh, require to measure something else. Uh, you can see also that uh, here we have uh, for example the letter V. Uh, this, this is standing for a valve or a, an actuator. So this would be quite uh, useful if you are controlling for example the flow. Uh, you will have a flow sensor. The flow sensor will give you a signal and uh, then uh, you will control a wall for an actuator to, to control the flow actually. And we'll see that uh, we'll have uh, special symbols also for walls and uh, different kinds of actuators. Uh, here is uh, the usual order under which uh, you arrange the letters. So for example if you want to indicate or locally display your variable, use the letter i, and then if you want to lock the variable, then you would use the letter r, and eventually those those other ones. So uh, in my example, you can see that I have uh, locally measured the temperature, I have indicated that locally, and then I did not log it, but uh, here I used uh, the the signaling function, which is telling me what is the state of uh, what is the, the value of it uh, somewhere else. So here are a few examples. Uh, those examples are taken directly from the standard that I'm talking about. 
we can see the symbol here and uh, this is uh, with the, you can see this this thick line this is telling me that's uh, the material flowing so uh, the pi diagram is uh, like a block diagram where you have individual blocks or individual tanks for example and uh, you show the flow of materials in this diagram with those thick lines and this thin line is telling me that I measure the variable and this is my instrument so you can see okay fi f we know that it stands for flow and i stands for indicator so it is you can see okay it's locally mounted and uh, locally i show what is the value of my property or what is the value of flow in this case here we can see a flow rate recorder so again, well, it's a horizontal pipe in this case. This is the measuring spot. F stands for flow and R, that's the recorder or we lock locally the data. Here, we can see an example of, uh, of uh, Q. You can see Q if you go to the table. Q is quality or concentration and here we they have used a different meaning uh, like quality in in terms of electrical conductivity for example so they are specifying here that this is conductivity the letter r is telling me okay this is a recorder and uh, this horizontal line is telling me that this is panel mounted so it's in a panel somewhere on some electrical box for example or in some control room uh, where we display the, the, the value and we record it. Here you can see uh, an example of a pressure difference. So P, the first letter, is for pressure. Then we have the letter D, which if we go to the table, it actually should be the, the small letter. It's telling me that I measure the difference. And uh, then R is the recorder. So we can see, okay, this is a pipe, this is a pipe, and I need to measure the pressure difference between the two pipes. So I measure pressure, difference, and I record it. And this is locally mounted, so I will have uh, the info locally. I do not transmit it anywhere uh, to a control system. I will see this pressure difference on the display locally where it is mounted. Or if it would be, for example, a panel meter, then we would see a horizontal line like this. And if we would like to transmit this signal somewhere to a control system, for example, then uh, we would need uh, to add the letter T, which is telling me, okay, now I will transmit this signal somewhere. Here is an example of uh, a pressure and uh, I'm looking for the high pressure value and this is like a pressure alarm that is uh, locally mounted again I do not uh, signal that I do not transfer this signal uh, to some control system I locally measure it and I locally do something I if the pressure is too high I will turn on the light for example or I will uh, turn on some buzzer and here we can see an example of a level indicator so this measures a liquid level it is locally mounted and the letter the second letter I is telling me that this is an indicator so I locally display the value and here we can see the specified point where do I measure the liquid level so this specifies not only that I measure it in this tank, but I measure it specifically at this position. So here is an example uh, of uh, how the process could look like. And uh, this is uh, an example without, let's say, any actual meaning of the variables. So that we can just understand uh, uh, the first piece uh, of our PI diagram. 
so here we can see okay this symbol you probably know from other past subjects so this is a wolf and uh, here we can see okay the flow of material would be like this so this is probably something like heat exchanger and uh, this would be a pipe a pipe going like that here is a spiral and uh, it's in a tank so uh, we would probably heat up this, this tank uh, this uh, pipe that might be some steam for example that's uh, heating uh, heating the pipe uh, we can open and close the valve so that we can adjust eventually the flow of the steam and uh, those would be our sensors you can see that in the pipe we can measure this this for example could be temperature this could be flow here we have a specified measuring point so for example this could be temperature that we have at this specified point we can see that we can measure other variables we could measure liquid level or we could measure pressure or we could measure anything else that we want in the process you can see that the circle can go uh, anywhere and the line can go anywhere so uh, if you do not need to specify exactly where do you need to the measurement point you can do it like this here this means okay in this vessel I measure some variable in this same vessel I measure some other variable and you place it around the vessel and only if you really need to specify the position where the measurement point needs to be then you specify it with a circle like this we'll see later more examples uh, of uh, processes including uh, those numbers so here is such an example uh, we have a tank and uh, we need to measure the liquid level in this tank so here is the input we have uh, the flow of material is going like this you can see you can see thick both lines uh, so this would be my input you can see arrows are marking what is the flow of material here I have some sensor for the liquid level without specifying uh, the operating principle. So this might be ultrasound, this might be radar, this might be capacitive, whatever. Uh, I can see that this is a liquid level sensor because the first letter is L. I can see that I transmit the signal somewhere. So this is transmitter. So LT le is level transmitter. And uh, the number below is telling me to which circuit does this belong. And here they have chosen the letter 100, the number 100. And you can see that all the symbols, all the numbers that belong to the same circuit, they have the same number. So here, this level transmitter transmits the signal to a level controller here the same circuit number and the level controller controls the valve which controls the flow in the pipe so this is telling me okay if for some technological reason I need to maintain the liquid level constant then here I can open the valve if I need to draw more liquid or I can close it if I uh, if I want to fill it back to my original level that I desired you can see that here it's telling me that this signal is being transmitted like that to a controller and the this controller controls this valve so we can see okay this will be a valve and uh, we'll later see that what this symbol means so that it's like uh, automatically controlled like uh, it's like a servo valve it's not ha hand operated and uh, we can see okay now this is liquid level L and see if we go to our table it will be the um, the controller 
and here this last one LV so L stands for uh, liquid level and uh, here we can see okay the letter V on this position stands for valve or an actuator so what we are doing here is that uh, we say okay this is an actuator that uh, is controlling the liquid level here you can see a second example and we measure multiple variables here uh, it is a heat exchanger so it's uh, kind of the same like that this one but uh, we have here the written symbols that we have here so here is my heat exchanger I need to heat some product for some liquid so that I can do something with the specified liquid with the specified temperature and I'm heating it with steam so here is the steam coming in and here is the steam coming out and I can control the flow rate of steam with this valve which is again not hand operated it's uh, operated uh, automatically with some signal and here is my product here <coughs> it's going the product and here it's heated so let's say I first I would need to heat it from 20 to 50 for example centigrade we can see that here we have again a wolf but uh, this wolf is not automatically controlled so I just set it so that it's giving me the flow rate of my product and in this case <coughs> I did not need to, to control it automatically and uh, now I measure the temperature of, in my heat exchanger so here I measure the temperature T stands for temperature and the second letter T stands for transmit so I'm measuring the temperature and transmitting it. The code for the, the number code for my circuit is 401. And we can see that all 401s here in the circuit, they correspond to the same circuit. We can see that here, this signal is being transmitted also to a control system. So here I get the temperature, I indicate it locally so there will be some display and letter C means that I am using this for a control. Here we can see, okay, now it's clear that the signal is going like this. This is the signal going from the sensor. We'll just see the meaning of those crosses. This is the si electrical signal that is uh, traveling between the transmitter and the uh, <coughs> control system and display and this is the signal that is trans uh, traveling between the control system and between my con let's say control system for the actuator so this valve is uh, operated somehow and uh, how is it operated I can find it here I P I is for current and P is for pressure so in industrial systems uh, in well if you have a wolf like this in many cases they are operated with compressed air and that's the P letter here and letter I is telling me that this would be a current loop for example 4 to 20 milliamps and that at this device the current that I output from my control system at this device it is being converted to pressure so this IP is telling me that this would be a current to pressure convert and then here again okay temperature I operate it with temperature and uh, I'm operating this valve with compressed air and here again I see okay temperature valve so this valve is controlling the temperature in my heat exchanger and all this in the same circuit 401 
I will show you more examples uh, today, so we'll, uh, we'll see some real industrial examples of uh, PI diagrams. Uh, well, this example is uh, coming from the book. And since I have the book only in Czech, uh, then I will have to translate some of this. Uh, but uh, in the English English book, uh, you will of course find it in English. But even without understanding the description here, uh, you can already start to guess what do we do in this process. So we here we have some material. This material is going on a conveyor belt. We do something with the material on the conveyor belt and here we have uh, our processed material. Now this process is uh, a continual drying process. So here on the input you have uh, <coughs> some wet material that you need to dry and here you have your dried material. So what do we do here? Here we have a silo of our material. We measure the liquid level. We indicate the low level and high level so that we can fill it uh, or eventually we can stop the conveyor belt if it's empty. The same we do here with the dried material. So here uh, we see that we we check only uh, the the high level of the material and uh, we don't measure the low level of the, the of our material. So the material is flowing like this. You can see different symbols. Okay, this is clearly a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt will be driven by an electric motor, which is shown here. This is my motor. Uh, I will measure the actual speed of my conveyor belt, so S stands for speed. I will indicate it locally so that I have some info on the local display and C is telling me this is control. So you can see here, okay great, this is a feedback loop. I measure the actual speed and I control it with some control system which would be this one so that I have, for example, some constant value of my speed regardless of the actual load. So we can see, okay, this would be the feedback loop here, those crosses, they tell you, th those cr cross lines tell you that this is your signal. So this is not a flow of material, but this is a control signal that is going to some actuator, which will be this symbol. And this is controlling the speed of your motor. For example, this one here, <coughs> M, <coughs> if you remember the values from the table, uh, stands for moisture or humidity. So here I measure the humidity of uh, the air that is uh, in the drying oven. I stands for indication, so I indicate it locally on the display, and R is telling me okay I log it I record it somewhere every time you can see okay we, there is a different number here 0 1 0 6 and so on so this is telling me a circuit and uh, we'll be able to find more specific description in, in typically a table uh, that is uh, provided with this picture here we can see a fan so this is a symbol for a fan. We're blowing air into a heat exchanger. So here we are heating the air up. And this air is then going into my drying oven. So it's uh, going through those nozzles. It's being heated so that it will take the moisture from my material. And uh, in order to control what is the moisture I have a moisture indicator and recorder in this uh, output pipe and again here we can see that this is a control system so this is like a closed loop here <coughs> I have a flow sensor at ref I indicate it locally what's the flow I record it to some 
block and I use the signal for control system. So here a feedback loop, flow sensor here would be a control system that controls the flow of uh, the air. Well here it's obvious it would be it would be a speed control of the motor so I would uh, adjust the speed of the fan. The same is here. Uh, I want to have some specified temperature so I measure the temperature. I indicate it locally. I record it. I use it for a control system and then this last letter A is for signaling so I signal it somewhere. And plus here I also check for the high level of my signal. And again this is a closed loop so this will be a valve that uh, controls the flow through the heat exchanger. Now this would be a steam again so here would be steam. I can control the flow of steam so that I have some specified temperature of my air and uh, here I measure the temperature of my steam and uh, you see okay now here I don't use it for control so I just measure the pressure and I indicate it locally and there is no letter C so that I don't use it for control there is no letter R I don't log it anywhere so only this local indicator will show me what is the pressure in the pipe and uh, I don't need to know this for the control system so I don't use the signal anywhere in a closed loop. So this is a typical example of uh, a PI diagram that uh, you may find in industrial applications and throughout today's lecture I'll show you more uh, of those examples. Uh, again here this is just an example in Czech uh, because I don't have the, the book in English but uh, this is how the table is looking like and how it, this is describing the details of, uh, of uh, your circuit numbers. So the first column is the number of your circuit here, so 0, 1, 0, 6, 0, 2. And then the second column is the description. So it's telling you more details. So for example, what is it doing so that this is doing it, this, this measures the liquid level in uh, the, uh, but not liquid level, but the, the level of your material uh, in the silo, for example. Uh, later, I have some more examples in English, so uh, we'll, we'll see that in English. So here's some more uh, PI diagrams. And um, well, it looks like more complicated, but uh, <coughs> it uh, was basically the, the same. Uh, same process or similar to, to what we've just seen. Uh, again, this is some vessel. Now here they call it a reactor. So um, you will have some product that is, that is going in. You will heat it and then your product will go out. So this is my product going in with a pipe. You can see thick lines. So this is the flow of material. This is my product coming out and uh, I measure the pressure of my product in a pipe. I transmit it somewhere and here you can see this is specifying that this is a wireless signal. And here I take the measurement of pressure, I indicate it locally on the display and I record it to some lock. And this reactor is being heated uh, to constant temperature with steam. So here is my steam coming in. I have an automated uh, valve here. It is being controlled by a pneumatic signal. So you can see this is a signal that is going like a pressure signal. And uh, in order to control this valve, I need some sensor. So here I have uh, the temperature sensor. So TT is a temperature transmitter specified at this position. This is my signal 
<coughs> that is going to a control system. It can be a digital bus, for example. Here is my control system. So I take the temperature, I indicate it locally, and I use it for control. And this is the horizontal line, so this is on a panel. The same like, like this one. So the pressure and temperature is uh, displayed on some panel in the control room. Now from this control system, here I have uh, a control signal that is going like x uh, 4 to 20 milliamps current loop. It's going to a converter that's converting from current to pressure, which is this device. It's taking in temperature and producing compressed air with specified pressure. This is the pneumatic signal that is controlling my valve. You can see temperature being controlled by the valve. Here in this picture we don't have uh, the circuit numbers. You can have them. Uh, here probably you don't need them because it's all clear from the symbols and connections. But if it's like a more complicated uh, circuit you will need those numbers uh, because it's easier to, to understand what the circuit is doing. Now let's have a few words of about the, the actuators. Now, the actuator is uh, a circle that uh, has a diameter of uh, approximately 5 millimeters. So this is my actuator and this circle means that this is an automatic actuator so like servo wall for example so if i go back here uh, to some of my circuits here you can see okay this is a wall and this circle is telling me that this is an automatic actuator automatic wall so i feed in some signal and uh, it will control mechanically the valve in such a way that I have the desired output of, uh, of, my, of my variable. Uh, the general symbol, if you do not uh, distinguish any specific type in the diagram, is a triangle like this, which has a side of uh, about 5 millimeters. And then, with uh, some letters, you can specify uh, what is uh, the actual function of uh, your actuator. So for example if it's a circle like this, the circle is telling me that this is an automatic actuator and the letter H is telling me that it has also hand control. So if um, the power falls out I can go to the actuator and I can manually operate it with hand. If it is only hand operated, it is a semicircle like this with the letter H. So this means it's a hand control device. There will be no input signal that's going in there, but someone will really need to manually operate it by hand. And here we see a few examples. What, what will happen? if uh, there is a failure of uh, the actuating energy. So for example, if I go to my signal here, uh, here we had uh, a pressure signal, a pneumatic control signal, and uh, well, this symbol will not tell us. So, so what will happen if uh, I will lose the pressure? So in some processes you need to make sure that, for example, this valve will be closed or that this valve will be fully opened. And uh, you can do so by specifying, again, the symbol in your schematic. So this is an example with the arrow pointing towards the actuator that is telling you that it will be fully opened on failure. And here, when the arrow is going to your valve, it's uh, telling me okay now this will close on failure so it depends on the technology for example if you need to keep the steam flowing or if you want to close it but so that's that's uh, up to the person who uh, is designing the process 
uh, you can also have uh, the wolf that retains position and then it's a symbol like this so when you have a failure of uh, your energy then this wolf will retain position the last position that was before the failure and uh, you will have some flow of, uh, of steam if, the, if this would be steam uh, controlling um, how about the signal lines? Uh, we've already seen that uh, the signal lines uh, are the thin lines looking like this. So this is uh, telling me that this is my <coughs> signal. Uh, it ha can have uh, those uh, crosses in regular intervals uh, with an angle of 60 degrees. So that's an example that you can see here. And eventually it can have also an arrow. And this arrow can tell us what is the direction of my signal, if it's not clear. So uh, <coughs> if we have an example like this, we have uh, the material, so this would be the pipe, and we measure something. We measure, for example, temperature. So this is my sensor, this is my transmitter. I transmit the signal to some recorder, and here it's clear the signal cannot go like that. <coughs> so uh, here uh, we have uh, no arrow, but uh, we could have an arrow if uh, it would uh, help us to clarify the <coughs> flow of signal. Uh, so this is a signal like this. We see that there is no crossing in there. So uh, <coughs> this signal is going in this way, this signal is going that way. If there is a junction, then we use typical circles like this. <coughs> uh, you can use also uh, just a thin line if uh, an error <coughs> can be excluded. So, if, um, for example, you don't, you can't make a mistake between the material flow and the signal flow. So it's also possible. Um, this is how you can actually specify what type of signal you are transferring. <coughs> so uh, we may have to specify that uh, this would be an electrical signal, this would be a pneumatic and so on. So uh, okay, you can. we have seen this symbol, the capillary <coughs> symbol. So if I go to back to my diagram where we found it, I think it was where was it? It was it was here. So this is the capillary symbol. So it's like a thin tube that is uh, guiding your liquid. And uh, here we have the transmitter, and this is my electrical signal afterwards. So with those symbols, you can. Uh, add more info to your diagram and you can say that for example some signal would be transferred as an electrical signal some signal would be transferred as a pneumatic and so on uh, here are a uh, few examples <coughs> so uh, we have some technological process and in this process we need to measure multiple variables uh, we need to measure liquid level, flow and temperature. All are being transmitted to a single control system. So here you measure multiple variables with one instrument. So this is this would be your instrument like this. You measure all the variables. You transfer the signals to a control system. And uh, here we see a valve that is being uh, automatically operated with a signal coming from our control system and uh, here we measure pressure we record it we use it for control and we transmit it somewhere so we transmit it here to to our control system so this control system is uh, recording the data and it's taking in four variables uh, there is another possibility that's quite similar you can see okay this one liquid level flow temperature I have the same symbol so I repeat it basically four times 
and uh, here the pressure is going also to this device that's called UR. Now, if, what does it mean UR? Let's, let's go to the table and see. So uh, U, it's telling me that this is multiple variables. So based on the letter U, I can see I am working with multiple variables in my system. And uh, the letter R, which was the last one, was uh, for logging. So this uh, device is working with multiple variables. That's here, and it's logging them. And also this horizontal line is telling me that this is a panel meter. So it's um, mounted somewhere on a panel in a control room, for example. Uh, now, how about if we have computer controlled system? So, so far, what we've just seen was assuming that we have, uh, for example, a programmable controller or a local control that uh, is not controlled by computer. Uh, there is um, a slight modification of uh, the standard when it regards the controlled, uh, the computer control systems. So um, the symbols are similar, but uh, you may recognize uh, directly that uh, the technology is controlled with a computer. And the symbols are shown here. So instead of uh, a circle, we use a hexagon. But it has the same meaning as a circle. So if it's a hexagon like this, it means, okay, this is my sensor, but now this is a control, uh, computer control system. This is on a panel, and this is like a wider symbol so that I can fit more info in it. This is the output signal, and this is eventually specifying what's, what, the, what is it doing. So, for example, this measures uh, uh, O2 uh, that is being s dissolved somewhere in the, in the liquid. Uh, the symbol D is uh, a combination of uh, both the, let's say, traditional system and the con computer control system. So here, this circle is uh, a local temperature measurement and indication. And uh, here we have the computer signal uh, so that uh, it's a recording temperature, it's recording it and uh, it's uh, indicating it somewhere. So the symbols are the same except we have a hexagon instead of a circle. But the meaning of the letter is the same. You can see, okay, here we have uh, the same numbers that uh, correspond to our circuit numbers. And uh, we may also have uh, some additional info such as this one. So here I measure the maximum of my temperature and I check for the low level of my temperature. So that, that could be separate indicators, for example, like an alarm uh, that uh, sounds when the temperature is too high or too low. Uh, let me finish with a few examples of uh, the control system. Again, some of them are like with some, some check text uh, because they are coming mostly from this book, but uh, I will translate what is the meaning. Uh, so this is an example about a simple liquid level control system, which you can see here. So this is my tank and I need to measure the liquid level and I want to make I want to make it constant so uh, I have a liquid level sensor so for example this one here this is a liquid level sensor L I indicate it locally I record it and I use it for control and you can see by the symbols that this will be a computer control system so this is where I tap the liquid level. So I could have a pressure sensor, for example. Uh, I measure it locally, display it locally. And this is my signal that is going to an automating valve, which is opening and closing. So if my liquid level is too low, I will open the valve more so that it fills the tank. 
if uh, the liquid level is uh, too high I will close the valve and I will I will control those valves that uh, are draining the tank you can see that here we have a flow sensor it's locally indicating what is the flow but I don't use this for control so this would be a local display you can see all those meters are on a panel so I would see on a panel what is the flow but it's the liquid level which uses feedback control to control the liquid level in the tank those valves on the bottom they are draining the tank you can see that they are hand operated so it's like a distortion so that I open it more it will drain the tank more and this control system needs to open the water flow in to keep the liquid level so this is hand operated it's not automatically operated with some signal and here this LI it's a liquid level indicator so this would be another kind of sensor for measuring the liquid level you can see that by judging on the position this would be on the bottom of the tank and this would be on top so this would check if uh, the liquid level is not too high and uh, it would eventually sound an alarm so that I do not overfill uh, the, the tank you can see that this belongs to a different circuit so uh, zero 01 is for control like that feedback control and this circuit zero 02 they use it to indicate the liquid level so they have two separate uh, liquid level meters both displaying the value on the panel like so independent measurements and a uh, similar picture is shown here uh, this is uh, temperature control in the tank so we have a tank with uh, some liquid here is uh, my heater and I want to heat the water to some specific temperature so here I have a temperature sensor you can know that they have specified that this would be my measurement point I measure the temperature I indicate it locally I record it into a lock and I use it for control and I feed the signal out to my actuator now this is like a gener generic symbol for actuator and this would be my heater control so this is the heating spiral electrical most likely and this would be the heater control and my product that is going out here that would be the, 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 the water that uh, I am heating in my in my tank the water is going in like this I can close it with a hand valve I can uh, close it also with this uh, automated valve but also with hand control so I have redund redundancy here two valves I measure the temperature of uh, the input water I indicate it locally I measure the temperature of my output water and I indicate it locally so this is my feedback control I'm controlling this and this is just showing me the values on some panel meter here you can see like a really complicated uh, example of uh, such a PI diagram well of course we'll not go through this entirely but uh, just uh, very very briefly so this is an example how uh, a process uh, could look like when it's uh, starting to get more complicated so here we have our main vessel steel drum steam drum sorry not steel but steel steam drum and what do we what do we see here okay here I have PI pressure indicator so this means that I'm I'm showing some some pressure somewhere this would be my pressure transmitter so this is what senses the pressure they all belong to the same circuit 332 so this is this one circuit I have a local indicator of pressure 
I have a pressure transmitter, so this transmit me some signal, and this goes to a panel that uh, is displaying me the pressure on uh, some panel in a control room. Um, for example, let's say this one, L, this would be level, so liquid level of something. S is for switching, so I'm switching between the two the, the signals that I have. For example, here I have TI and uh, TE, so same circuit, so this would be my pressure, uh, my temperature sensor. It measures the temperature of some spot in, in my process and uh, I transmit the signal like this to a pressure indicator which is on a panel. And here we can see that the high, high, high alarm for this process is set at 180 Fahrenheit. So although we don't understand what this process is doing, we can start seeing what do we measure. So we measure temperatures here, we measure pressures, we measure liquid level here. Here FC stands for flow and C control. So I measure flow of something, you can see, okay, outlet steam. So this is some steam coming from somewhere. I measure the flow and I use this signal to control some other variable in my process. So a few more examples. Um, this is an example of a uh, process again from the book. Uh, it's uh, mostly the book is mostly about chemical and, uh, and the biochemical and um, like food processes. And this is a soaking of barley grain. Um, so we are soaking some grain. Um, if you do that, you need to measure the temperatures. You need to measure the liquid level. Uh, you need to operate some valves. So this is your process. Here you see this is the probe for temperature, so specified place somewhere. I measure the temperature. Liquid level. I indicate it locally, well all cases here I indicate locally and I use it for control. So this is telling me that I control the liquid level. I control the temperature <coughs> and here is my input so this uh, this is an actuator yeah, we can see that all this is controlled uh, with the computer because this is uh, the hexagon symbols and uh, here we can see the letter O and if we go to our table let's see what uh, the letter O stands for the letter O stands for user selectable. So uh, just by looking on the picture, you cannot tell what do they measure here, but uh, you would need to go into the this detailed description and uh, you would need to find out what does this mean. And in this case, uh, they are using it uh, as a control signal from the computer. So. Uh, this is a cooling, so they are controlling the cooling system. Here they are using it uh, to control the flow of water. Here they are using it to mix the, the water that's circulating like this with the water that's coming in and so on. This is this is heat. So uh, even without understanding uh, the text here, which is in Czech, uh, you can start to understand the process. We can say okay now this is some other process variable that is not specified here. This is temperature, this is liquid level, this is temperature again. Uh, another example is uh, the bakery. So in a bakery you need to bake the, the materials and uh, this is like in the, the entire process but again let's just focus on uh, on one part for example here so this here we can see temperature 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 so in this oven we have four zones one two three four we measure the temperature 
and we use it to control with the feedback what's the actual temperature in the zone so uh, here is a heater this would be a fan that blows the hot air in a zone like this above, uh, above what you're baking and uh, you can see this is my feedback loop and uh, most likely this would be uh, this would be either some some gas or some steam that uh, is heating uh, heating the, the areas so we can see temperature sensors in most cases now this is placed on a conveyor belt like that and conveyor belt it has a speed control so uh, we're controlling how fast this is moving with a speed sensor and the products are moving on the conveyor belt and I think this is my last example uh, this is beer production uh, so basically that's uh, about two tanks one tank is here and another tank is over there and we're moving the products back and forth between the tanks we're heating it to a different temperature uh, we're boiling it or we're cooling it and so on so uh, let's take a look on um, just some part here now this would measure the ambient temperature it's like hanging in the air ti i measure the temperature locally and i indicate it uh, for example here TIC this I measure the temperature in the tank I indicate it locally I use it for control so here is the heating element it's heating the water and uh, this is the control signal that's actuating the actuator which would be the, the heater control to have the desired temperature I measure the liquid level so here we have liquid level LH superscript I check for high level and low level uh, for example here uh, we have a pump we have a motor that is driving the mixing process so it's like mixing the products and the SIC here is telling me I measure the speed I indicate it locally and I use it for control so again without even understanding what this process is about by looking on the PA diagram we can see what do we measure where do we measure and uh, how do we use the signals here or basically the only signal that we use for feedback control is this one here I'm using the temperature we can also see that uh, there are some hand operated valves for example here and here so those are only hand operated someone has to go there manual and turn them to have the desired property of temperature or flow for example but uh, we have also some automated devices like this one this is a valve which is actuated and the letter O is again telling me for user defined so we would need to find uh, in the documentation what is the actual meaning of this what is it doing so if it's controlling water or uh, if it's controlling something else <coughs> uh, if you would like to see more examples then I recommend you to take a look on those uh, those three links uh, those are videos uh, about uh, how uh, to use the piping and instrumentation diagrams uh, also a very brief video about how to read them and um, if you would like to make an online training that's this last link uh, there are some um, some software tools that allow you to plot directly uh, those uh, PI diagrams and uh, also I have made uh, selection of uh, the, the symbols that uh, you uh, have on Moodle here and this is uh, well not a library but it's a it's a document uh, about uh, standard symbols uh, that are used in PI diagrams so if you would like to draw them in AutoCAD for example then you can use this as an inspiration to get uh, the actual shapes of your symbols 
So that's it for today's lecture and uh, we'll meet uh, on the next one.